Happy Friday, June 11th. Hope everybody had a good week of trading here with your pro members weekly video update uh, for the week ending Friday, June 11th. So take a look at the markets first, uh, looking at SPX, uh, just in a kind of a slow grind mode. I mean, even going back, uh, back to the middle of April, I mean, we're talking about just a, about a 200 point range in the S&P 500. Uh, did hit a new all-time high barely yesterday on Thursday and basically right there today as well. So just uh, like we've been talking about, still anticipating this thing's going to just continue higher, at least in the short term. Uh, but we've, we've still got a, we're carrying a little bit of short delta. We're about one to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. Uh, we did shed some trades, some iron ducks, some other theta related trades. So uh, our theta numbers are fairly low. We're, we're sitting on about 65, 70% cash for this, uh, for this account because implied volatility has just been absolutely annihilated. You know, in the uh, 21 day IV indicators at zero on the 252 day, the annual it's at zero. Uh, so really very low implied volatility. So we're just kind of picking our spots, still continuing to do our weekly double calendars, still continuing to layer on some iron ducks as we see opportunities. Uh, but you know, you gotta, you gotta play the card you're dealt. So we don't want to force anything. Uh, we don't want to get too crazy. One thing I have been looking at, and I talked about a couple weeks ago and I haven't done anything yet, but I think next week it looks like, uh, our old friend soybeans, uh, still implied volatility is still pretty high on that soybeans just ripped higher, uh, creating some, uh, nice implied volatility. I haven't done anything cause it was just making huge moves. I didn't want to sell any premium and get blown out. It seems to have kind of caught in a range, but the implied volatility is still nice and high. So we will be potentially looking to sell some premium in the grains next week. Uh, if we look at uh, going back to the indices, but going back to the market, uh, the NASDAQ. So it had it hit an all time high back on April 29th and we're just under that as well. So I expect uh, the NASDAQ to blow through that all time high as well. Will that happen next week? Maybe it'll consolidate first and then do it. You know, who knows? But uh, I'm expecting that level to be taken out. If we look at the Russell, uh, the Russell has been an extremely tight range as well for even longer. Uh, and it's not too far off of its all time high. So eventually I think we'll, we'll push through that. Uh, and if we look at the VIX, I mean, looking at volatility, like I said, volatility has just been getting annihilated. We had that one spike back in early May. We took advantage of that. We sold uh, some short call verticals in VXX. And then, but this thing has just continued to bleed, bleed, bleed lower. Uh, if you look at it, you know, compared to where we were, you know, obviously back down below pre-pandemic levels in the VIX. I mean, the VIX is at fifth in the 15 handle, which we haven't seen uh, since back before the pandemic. So, uh, hopefully, we can get a little pop in implied volatility to create some opportunities. Uh, if we look at gold, looking at GLD, uh, gold and silver. Uh, kind of consolidating here the last couple weeks after after a big March higher, uh, and then bonds has been in a very tight range as well, uh, just kind of uh, up and down, up and down. Had a, had uh, some upside this week, but still in a fairly tight range for the last couple months. So continuing to watch that. Uh, real quick before we jump onto the alerts, give you a quick update on the day trading. Uh, a little bit of a red week this week, down 558. Uh, lost a little over a thousand on a runner strategy. Just did a couple pairs trades. That was today. Booked 189, and uh, not very many mighty 90s. Just uh, 280 on six trades. So a little bit in the red there. Uh, but we'll continue to. We're going to be streaming all uh, every day next week. So if you get a chance, make sure you pop in there. Uh, all right, on to the alerts. Let's take a look. Monday, June 7th, we opened a an iron duck in the queues. Did this one with 18 days to expiration. Had a little tiny bit of downside movement in the market, so jumped in with an iron duck here. Let's take a look at QQQ. And sprint this down here. Uh, prices is, is well up the beak, but we still got a uh, you know a 20 plus percent chance that we could get back into the duck head. So we'll hold this. If it stays here or moves much higher into next week, we will just close it early, book that beak profit, and redeploy capital. Uh, while we're here, we've also got a, uh, a short call vertical that we actually rolled today. I think it was today or yesterday, maybe. Anyway, we'll get to the alert. Uh, but 
pretty close to where we put it on, uh, pretty close to where we rolled it, just holding this for some of that short delta exposure. Facebook, I uh, did a long call diagonal in Facebook. So trying to, you know, just kind of slowly piece in to try to catch some of this upside momentum. We chose Facebook, I uh, did a long call diagonal here. Uh, Facebook has moved down a little bit since we put this on. Uh, but the, the, the reasoning behind this, you know, Facebook right below its all time high, just kind of pulled back where we put this on a couple days ago and looking for another push higher into, into all time highs. So I wanted to get a bullish play on and Facebook looks like a great candidate for that. So we'll see if we get some upside momentum in Facebook here in the next week or so. We've got, we put this on with this decent duration, uh, 24 days to expiration in the front week when we put this on. So we've got some time to let that hopefully play out. Uh, QQQ, we also had another iron duck in the queues. We booked that one, booked a beak profit on that one as prices run higher with very little chance of getting back to the beak profit. Just closed that early and booked beak profit. On SPX, weekly double calendar. So we opened this one with eight days in the front AM options. And actually this was, uh, this was corrected later, but it was actually 14 days in the back week. I just didn't like the, the way the strikes, I didn't like it way, the way it set up with the 12 day option. So we went out one more, one more cycle and, and, uh, and put that on. So let me show you what that looks like. We actually added another uh, weekly double calendar today. So we'll look at both. Uh, this is the one from the alert that I just mentioned. Uh, and this is, has the back week expiration, June 21 and the front week with the AM uh, expiration cycle here, the June 18 AM cycle. So this has moved up slightly out of center since we put it on, but, uh, we, uh, but we just got this uh, on not too long ago. So we'll be taking this off near expiration next week. While we're here, let's take a look at the other one. I'm sorry, this is the one from the alert I just mentioned. Uh, this is the one with the, with the back week out in the, on the June 23 expiration. I got those mixed up. Um, so we're up about 80 bucks here. You see that profit tent's really starting to sag. And that's just, I mean, again, implied volatility is just absolutely getting annihilated. So, um, you know, that we're still up a little bit, still have a chance to, to book a decent profit, still got a nice wide range. If we get any kind of down movement, any kind of pop in implied volatility, that profit tent will push right back up and, uh, and, and we'll benefit from that. So we'll see what happens into next week. SPX closing trade. So we had an iron duck in SPX that we closed that as well. Closed that one early, booked beak profit because price ran higher and didn't have much of a chance to get back to the duck head. So we just closed that out and booked some profits there. Uh, ES, we've got this long put vertical that we've been holding for short delta. Um, and it's pretty close to where we put it on, just right here, just inside the range there. So looking for some more downside to benefit that. SPY Vertigo, we closed this one out with one day to expiration. Didn't quite make it out of the valley, it was, it was getting there, uh, but I didn't want to risk it and hold it into the, we probably would have booked a profit today had we held it, but, uh, but when you get that close to expiration, you get that, that P&L really dipping into that valley. Didn't want to take a risk because if price would have moved lower, we would have taken a, a much larger loss. So we just closed that out and, uh, and took a little loss on that one. SPX weekly double calendar. So we closed this out. Uh, we were, uh, we booked like 15 bucks on this, basically a scratch trade. Um, and we were at one DTE. Uh, I mentioned you could hold it till today, but it would have, uh, it would have been a loser had you held it till today. So it was a good choice in taking that one off and just taking a, taking a scratch profit on that one. DE long put vertical. We went ahead and rolled this one. We were over 50% of max profit on this piece. So we, we were in a weekly that had 21 days to expiration, rolled that out to 35 DTE into the monthlies. And so uh, we're pretty close to where we just put that on uh, right inside range here. John Deere is fun. We've been, we've been using this for some short Delta, took some pain on the way up. It went kind of flatlined and now it's, it's really rolling over. We're seeing a lot of weakness in John Deere lately. So, uh, we'll continue to manage this one and keep this one on for some short delta exposure in our overall portfolio. QQQ, uh, this was a, uh, I already showed you this. This was that short call vertical uh, in the queues that we rolled from June to July to keep that short delta in our portfolio. Uh, Rut Iron Duck, uh, book this one. Again, another beak profit with price running higher. We're just taking profits early and we'll start to re redeploy that next week. Uh, so booked beak profit on that rut duck. 
Uh, SPX weekly double calendar. This is the one I just showed you. Did this one with the, the AM options in the front week, 10 DTE in the back week, and then McDonald's. So we had a long put diagonal on, looking for some downside in McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's never gave us the downside we were looking for, so we just we had our remaining long puts that we held uh, from last week, and so we just let those expire here after the market closed. So those are all of the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. Uh, we've got a we've still got our short strangle in bonds that we've been managing. Moved a little out of center because of the uh, up movement in bonds this week. We're up about two hundred and fifty dollars since we did our last roll. If we get a little downside back to center, we will book this one or roll it. Not to, I can't remember exactly where we are on our P&L in, in bonds. We've had some, uh, you know, like I said, a pretty tight range, so we might be getting back to an area of potential profits after all adjustments there. Uh, Apple, we've got a short position in Apple. This is a long put uh, uh, vertical, just hanging out near the break even. Need some downside to get back into action there. I mentioned DE, DIA, another uh, short call vertical, pretty close to where we rolled it last. Uh, looking for some downside to benefit that. Uh, Facebook, I mentioned. IWM, another uh, uh, short play, long put vertical. This one's just outside of range. Uh, this one's way out in July, though, so we got some time. Just looking for some downside to get back into range. Uh, let's see, I mentioned Qs, mentioned SPX, SPY. Um, I was looking at a Vertico for today. I didn't, I didn't end up sending the alert out. Just don't like the skew. I mean, look at that. Look at that profit line. It's just, it's just really goofy. Uh, so passed on the vertigo today, but we, we might look at putting on one next week. Uh, at some point, you know, price is going to break out of this little just narrow range, and we want to be positioned with a, a vertigo would be perfect for that. We've taken a couple losses recently just because, I mean, there is no movement in spy. You know, when there's no movement, that's not good for vertigo. So uh, we'll look to potentially put one of those on next week. But the position we have on is an iron duck and you can see let me just set these price slices so this one expires 622 so we still got a slim chance of getting back to the duck head uh, a little over 20 percent so we'll hold this if price kind of stays here or moves a little bit higher we'll just book this one take a beak profit there as well and then lastly xlk now this is our remaining piece in june so i waited I'm going to wait to roll this next week. We've got just the seven days to expiration left. Uh, so we'll be rolling this ne next week and uh, just extend duration, carry this for that short delta exposure in case we do get a little bit of downside action. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. That's your update. Hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you next week.